Jonathan Taylor and the Indianapolis Colts, are they really beefing? Is it really something to worry about? And for all of you that might be kind of out there wondering what's happening, just a small breakdown of the uh, contract talks and situation between JT and Indianapolis. So about three months ago, switched agents to Shaq Leonard's agent, his teammate who is a linebacker, and he said he was going to begin contract talks. Just a month after that, they officially began. Jonathan Taylor said he wants it done before the season, and he emphasizes he wants to retire a Colts. Then we had a little bit of Jonathan Taylor's agent and the Colts owner going back and forth on Twitter. Jim Mercer, the Colts owner, was saying that we negotiated a good CBA, took years of effort and hard work to now say that a specific player category, a.k.a. a running back, wants another negotiation after the fact it's inappropriate. Some agents are selling bad faith. Jonathan Taylor's agent comes up and says bad faith is not paying your top offensive player. Bryson, I'm sure you and I would both agree on that. I know I do. Jonathan Taylor requests a trade. Jim Mercer says, I'm not trading you. I don't care what you say. Then we have the comments from Jim Mercer talking about if he dies and Jonathan Taylor is out of the league, no one's going to miss them. The league goes on. It's a privilege. True foot in the mouth moment. Then reporters say that he might have suffered a back pain working out of Arizona. Jonathan Taylor says he never suffered it. He never reported it. So I don't know who your sources are, but get new ones. Stay with me, guys. We're almost there to the current timeline of this beef with Jonathan Taylor and the Colts. Pat McAfee. Former Colts player Pat McAfee show, of course, going to ESPN. Major guy on YouTube says the relationship between JT and the Colts seems to be improving. And the latest is he's taken time away from the team to now rehab the same ankle injury that he had last year. So after all that being said, Bryson had to fill the people in on what's actually going on with this tip tier. Do you think Jonathan Taylor This is a little bit of an interesting situation? I don't feel like he's all other running backs out there right now asking for their money. Is he justified? for wanting his payday and really having this back and forth with the uh, with the franchise? I think any player who wants his payday is justified in doing so. I, I've talked in depth about this on, on my show, Carving It Up Live, about how you know the the value of a running back, especially over the last, really, I, I call it the Mahomes era, because around yeah. the time Mahomes came in the league, you had a lot of these rule changes with how you can or can't hit the quarterback. Uh, right. Some of these new offenses come to the NFL that have deviated more and more away from running the football. Uh, yep. There's a stat that I've used that the last – Four Super Bowl champions, the highest that any of them have been ranked in rushing is Kansas City just this past season at 20th. So running yep. the football, I would argue, has never been less important uh, in the history of the NFL, you could argue. Uh, and certainly the, the position of running back, even the best running backs in the league, your Henrys, your Jacobs, your Saquon Barkley's, your yep. Tony Pollard. So those guys obviously dealing with, with contract holdouts uh, as we speak. And like you mentioned, Jonathan Taylor now. Listen, he's been a guy who, with the exception of last season, has stayed healthy for the you know majority of his very young career thus far. Uh, obviously, remember a couple of years ago, he was, arguably the best offensive player in all of football. He's up Definitely. there with Cooper Cup. Yep. Uh, had a massive season with the Colts. Uh, I remember loving him out of Wisconsin in the yep. 2020 draft. But Best running back in the draft, in my opinion, when he came out. He absolutely. Absolutely. No, and then Wisconsin has been kind of running back you, you know, for the, for the last uh, decade or so. So, the, you know, he obviously comes out of there. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> Two things can be true, as I say all the time, that yeah. Jonathan Taylor is more than justified in, in, in wanting his, his fair share. Uh, and, you know, again, the Colts are... I think the Colts are within their right to to maybe extend this a long time. Obviously, we'll, we'll get into Anthony Richardson, what this means for him. Right. Uh, but Jim Irsay, I don't know if that we've ever, even more than Jerry Jones, who I've been highly critical of, I don't know if we've ever had a more tone-deaf owner when it comes to negotiations yeah. or relationships yeah. with the players. Like, that's just something about how, you know, me and uh, Jonathan Taylor could die tomorrow and nobody cared. Like, the, you don't say that during a negotiation. Yeah. You that's don't not, publicize that comment at the very least. No, you don't. I even rem remember, and I've never been a Carson Wentz guy from the get-go. Go. But I yeah. remember when when they decided to trade Wentz to uh, to Washington, yeah. and he had the comment about how you know we would have made the playoffs if our quarterback could play better. It's like you don't say that. You don't just openly diss a player <laughs> like that. Like that's it's just it, we, when you have these meddling owners, you have your Jerry Jones, you have your Jim Mercer's, or formerly, thank God, now your Dan Snyder's. You yeah. know, it tends to really get in the way of things, and I think you're seeing that right now with Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, definitely. You got a lot of people out there saying, oh, this could really be the agent and the owner's fault for making the JT situation so crazy. Some people say it's not really as major as, you know, it's it's coming off uh, from the media and some of us, uh, as some of us believe. On the flip side, I do think it is a pretty serious matter. I want to get into that, you know, a couple points down from now. But like you said, two things can be true at the same time. I do definitely believe Jonathan Taylor is justified for wanting his money because to me, he's not an injury riddled back. This isn't an Austin Eckler that's mistimed, you know, consistently. This isn't a Dalvin cook that's missed time consistently this isn't a situation well excuse me it is a situation to where you see daniel jones fall off as a quarterback when saquon's not behind him 
the Colts went four and thirteen this year and picked up Anthony Richardson for a reason with the high pick in the draft. You know what I mean? Like sure. he barely gets handed the reins halfway through his rookie year. They take off. I want to say they go to the playoffs that year. They do and lose in the wild card. They win eleven games, if I'm not mistaken. And everybody after that year is like, man, wait till JT gets the reins. He does. 1,800 yards, 18 touchdowns, first in the league for both, and he's absolutely taking off. Last season, he gets injured. The first season he gets injured out of his early three-year and now going into his four-year career, they literally fall off of a cliff. And, you know, we'll get into this next point too, but to know that they were mismanaged so bad between quarterback, then they had injuries, the way the roster was built, Sam Ellinger, Matt Ryan, like it was freaking horrible, right? One of the worst yeah. – maybe shakiest front offices we've seen for a team that really had high hopes coming in. I know me, especially I was pretty pumped when Matt Ryan went to the Colts. I was like, Matt Ryan, me too. Minnesota or Indy. He goes to Indy and then it falls flat completely like that. So Jonathan Taylor is undoubtedly justified for wanting his money. I think this is kind of a special, excuse me, special, special situation in the league rather than other, um, excuse me, you know, you know, running back situations out there. But of course we do see the market today, uh, as well, and the Colts are wanting to adhere to that. They're not wanting to pay too much, get into maybe a Camara, a Zeke, you know, possibly a Christian McCaffrey type of situation. But Jonathan Taylor has been the face of that franchise since he was drafted there. He's the main player. He's going to be the main player next year. And people say that things are getting better. But let's let's get into the next point that I'm sure some people are kind of curious about. More than just Jonathan Taylor wanting his money, do you think the Colts are mishandling the situation? Jim Irsay's comments saying he's not going to trade them. Kind of seeing how even last year there was some major mishandling of the franchise. Your thoughts there? Yeah, and it's I, I forgot to bring up a point that you were talking about earlier, and I, I remember talking about this um, on my show a, a week or so ago about how the, there was a whole thing about there was a report that he had back injuries, and then Jonathan Taylor said, "No, I don't have back injuries," and I, I don't think call me nuts. I don't think a player is going to lie about his own his, his own body, his own injuries. Right. Uh, and so the question is, I don't know if the media just came up with that out of thin air. Where did they get that? Was this a negotiating tool? Maybe that the Colts put in in somebody's ear and put it out there. I don't know, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it's as it's about as mismanaged as, as I could think of from a player and, and front office perspective uh, with the Colts. Again, uh, when you consider that you do have a young quarterback coming in, we'll see if he starts yeah. week one. If it is Gardner Minshew, we'll see about that. But yeah. listen, it's a young team, young defense, young coach, uh, and you kind of want to have a little bit of stability there. Like that's that, that's one of, again, I've been a proponent of, I defend these organizations for not paying running backs. This right. is one of the few where I would get like, hey, he's he's more valuable to your team. Derrick Henry, for example, in Tennessee, like yep. the value that he has to his offense is not like the average running back to the average offense in the NFL like he's certainly yeah. more valuable to Indianapolis than say Isaiah Pacheco is to the Kansas City Chiefs it's a completely different dynamic so uh, I think the Colts are, are, are again mishandling this about as, as bad as you possibly could you know given yeah. the predicament they're in yeah right there with you as well and it really just double downs on the doubles down on that first point of Jonathan Taylor being justified for wanting his money I mean being such a focal point of that offense and everybody remembers him coming out of college we thought he was going to be RB1 from the start. I can't remember who was in front of him. It might have been Marlon Mack, if I'm not mistaken. And then they yep. give Jonathan Taylor the reins halfway through the rookie year, and he goes off. Sophomore year was great. Uh, you know, third year in the league falls off some, and some people come out and they're like, wow, you know, it's it's really risky for an athlete coming off their worst year of their career and asking for an extension. And it's like, well, yeah, it's their worst year because they had injuries, but it's sure. undeniable that when he is on the field, when he is in the game plan of Indianapolis, they're rolling. I mean, they literally, in his rookie year, lost a wild card game. You would have liked to see them make the playoffs the next year, but uh, I can't remember exactly what it was. I know the Colts defense kind of took a hit, and then, you know, the quarterback situation, never really stable after, um, you know, I mean, hell, if I'm remembering correctly, Phillip Rivers comes through there at the end. Matt Ryan mm -hmm. comes through there. We've had Carson Wentz come through there. It's kind of tough, you know, yep. to, to think about some of the, the veterans that have come through Indianapolis. Um, but I, but I, I hate to see them mishandle this situation because, again, just a few years ago, I mean, they're losing a wild card game and it feels like they have a bright future. I feel the way about the Colts as I do. I feel better about the Colts than I do the future of Arizona. But Arizona and Indianapolis were two teams where it's like, OK, they've got a lot of talent on both sides of the ball. They're starting to trend in the right direction. They have a season or two that's off. Really, Jim Irsay is kind of managing and just the whole head coaching situation of last year. And they're picking fourth in the draft. And you're kind of wondering what type of team they're going to be. Arizona, Kyler Murray, you know, the team that they have, I think they start seven and oh, go 11 and five down the stretch. And now yep. they're in the contention for the first and second overall pick. And it's crazy what a season of mismanagement um, quarterback confusion can really do for a franchise in the NFL. 